For more videos on people's struggles, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the new issue of People's Health Dispatch, uh, which is the health publication by People's Dispatch and the People's Health Movement dedicated to struggles uh, in health and health workers. So today uh, we will be talking about what has been going on in the field of TB advocacy. So we are joined here uh, by uh, Nadita Venkatesan, who is a TB advocate. Uh, she's also a journalist and a health activist for many years. Uh, previously, she has worked in media. She has covered uh, health systems in one of India's largest financial newspapers. Uh, but what is one of the most interesting things for us today is that Nandita is also a TB survivor and her personal experience has fed into her activism and today she continues also to advocate for the rights of people with TB all around the world. So thank you Nandita for joining us today uh, and we hope to hear more about uh, the recent uh, uh, developments in this field. So uh, today we wanted to start with uh, a bit of context. So for the past year or so, uh, we know that COVID-19 has disrupted the provision of health services in all the world. And this also includes care for uh, TB patients. So to start, to begin with, can you tell us something more about how TB care has been uh, affected during the pandemic? So uh, thank you so much firstly for having me and for including the voice of someone you, you know from from the community and from the survivors perspective thanks a lot for you know treating us as vital stakeholders in the conversation so uh, to begin with the tb care firstly even before the pandemic was not really in the best of shape but the pandemic sort of appended and really disrupted the whole care that TB patients were receiving. So if I broadly put it, if we look at two categories, one is diagnosis and one is treatment. And so in the diagnosis side, um, because because a lot of a lot of TB TB care uh, TB diagnostics were repurposed for COVID. For example, you have the gene expert; they were repurposed for COVID patients. So TB a lot of people had to undergo delayed diagnosis. They got diagnosed. They got diagnosed very late because probably the the, the gen expert was not available when when to get to diagnose for uh, you know drug resistance. This is a very uh, gen expert is is a sort of a test that is a very baseline test. As in, suppose if you're showing symptoms of TB, then you take an X-ray, but then you also check for you do the gen expert test to sort of know whether are you resistant to any of the drugs or are you not, and then. A accordingly on the basis of your gene expert test is how your entire li line of treatment is decided but gene expert itself was repurposed for covid uh, and and that is how the and the loss was ultimately borne by tb patients because of that and uh, it's it's only i feel very sad that uh, that you, it's like pitting one disease against the other when both are equally important uh, you know you are you're taking care from one side and you're giving it to the other which, whereas I also understand COVID is very important, but it should, it should not come at the cost of neglecting other diseases as well. Yeah, that was the thing where patients had to face late diagnosis. Also, because their you know countries went through a lot of lockdowns and shutdowns. So, in countries where the health system is not very good, for example, even in India in the rural areas, for example, where people will have to walk miles to get to the nearest health center. There, you you had to go and collect your report and think and you know basic things like this were not happening because because you, transportation was shut so lockdowns affected affected a lot of uh, a lot of transportation etc so patients could not go out the other thing was that because diagnosis was going late and 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 people were generally stuck in their houses. A TB being an airborne contagious disease where it can spread, there was also the very big risk from what doctors also say is that you could end up spreading amongst your family members because you are just cooped up in one room with everyone because you can't travel out, you can't do anything because COVID has imposed these restrictions on movement, etc. And you're not even able to get proper care 
because because you know hospitals are not there they have been they have all most of the uh, most of the hospitals and care were diverted for covid care so that came at the cost of another infectious disease and that was tb and uh, the other thing was that because diagnosis was late and the second aspect of it was treatment so treatment that at least i could say in india for example and i'm sure a lot of other countries have done this where the governments put in place uh, a provision of giving medicines at the doorstep of patients uh, quite quite a number of countries i think as far as i know indonesia and 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 india as well they did this provision for providing tb medicines at the doorstep because i, I think even the governments did realize that you know you can't you can't come to a stage where patients can't access medicines and tb treatment is a way where you have to eat medicines every single day and you know you can't afford to miss out on even a single dosage so that is there so though even though this provision was made uh, t- w- the problem was that th- the problem was that uh at least in say severe forms of the illness for example i'm talking about drug resistant tb you have provision of injectables you are injections are given to patients as 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 a way of med- as as a way of medication so these injectables you need a nurse to come and you, or you have to go to the health center all of this so a big a big part was that your patients were not getting access to these injectables especially patients who are having drug resistant tb and things like that so treatment was also disrupted and what we saw all of that uh, be- we did not see much of public discourse around it unfortunately through last year but we saw that in the numbers that have come out in the who report it's shocking that deaths have gone up for the first time in the past decade and uh, it is exactly what every one of us had feared would happen in fact it's even worse than what what a lot of us had anticipated where deaths have gone up uh where the cost of inaction has been borne by the by the patients extremely extremely worrying situation because of this yeah uh and of course uh, there is something else that you mentioned already and that actually the problems that appear during the pandemic uh were there from before too too Uh, and that they were actually also quite connected to how rich countries and how the pharma industry perceives tb uh, mm. so maybe just for a little bit of a broader context could you uh, walk us through what was happening before the pandemic so uh, what was going on in the field of uh, the research for tb treatments uh, and vaccines and other products so in ter- in terms of vaccine firstly uh, we don't have we have been just using the bcg vaccine which is 100 years old bcg completed 100 years this year in in september and i think yeah september or october and we have been using the vaccine that is that has been proven to be ineffective every one of us i took the i took the bcg vaccine and yet i contracted tb Uh, and and a very severe form of the disease i know of several others who have taken the bcg vaccine that should have ideally given us some form of protection and they have contracted the illness so bcg vaccine even even if you don't go by these kind of anecdotal testimonies everyone even scientists and researchers have agreed that we need a newer vaccine for tb and unfortunately because uh, be, because the numbers the t- because the tb is seen as a a disease of poverty and tb is also seen as a disease which and the numbers are high mainly in devel- under developed and developing countries so pharmaceutical companies majority of which are based in the western countries they don't want to pay attention to this and we are seeing that we there are barely any vaccines available we don't have a vaccine for tb or an effective vaccine apart from the bcg there were one or two candidates that, that were funded by the gates foundation uh, that, that 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 there was news that that gates foundation was doing some funding for tb vaccine and and um, and, and some candidates had reached a certain stage uh, where they felt that a tb vaccine could be could be in sight but again uh, not there has been no movement after that um, i also feel that 
it is now important that developing countries with manufacturing capacity whether it is india or whether it they, whether it is countries in south africa we now need to step up and do something because it is very clear that pharmaceutical companies clearly are not interested and we and the more i see what played out during covid you know in terms of vaccine inequity etc it all the more depresses me that this will a similar thing a sort of similar indifference will has played out in tv and it will continue playing out in tv so i feel that it is important that uh, countries like india take matters in their hands and give give more money towards research and development and and you know sort of promote companies here to develop vaccines for tb otherwise i don't see anything happening right now it's, it's a sad state of affairs and in terms of medicines um, in in terms of drugs we had uh, like i said tb you have something called as drug resistant tb as well and in that uh, the medicines being used were extremely obsolete they are very toxic medicines which cause number of side effects one of which i had to bear as well i ended up uh, losing my hearing completely because of because of a medicine that was supposed to have cured me in the first place but but uh, that but i ended up losing a big part of who i am because of because of these medicines and uh, we had two new candidates from johns uh, two new medicines johns from johnson and johnson it's bedaquilin and from utsuka it is delamanid two new medicines in 40 years and finally uh, even then the access to these medicines has been very less we have seen sure countries reporting shortages for for delamanid drug because it's considered very expensive for patients in india at least i know it costs over i think anywhere uh, over 50000 to 1 lakh if i'm it, that it's a huge amount to be spent for just 6 months of medicines uh, so clearly the access is a big problem right now even though we have the medicines yeah and i think that's one of the crucial points that maybe we we should also stress that these things this kind of indifference by uh, by rich countries and by big pharma it actually has a real toll on people uh, so how has the tb community been affected by by the disregard uh, by both uh, the the rich states uh, and the pharmaceutical companies so it is for, first is that we are having recurring shortages just recently uh, uh, we we have sent previously in the past the tb community has sent letters to stop tb partnership to who last year or last year during the height, the height of the pandemic even in the previous year uh, community the tb community had sent letters flagging of shortages of certain medicines and even in even in india since i'm from india i can speak that we also recently sent a letter to our health minister as well flagging of shortages of drugs so shortages are 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 common we need people to understand that it that the impact is real wherein for example we saw that patients are still taking tons of injections when you have a better drug in terms of an oral medicine that's bedaquilin and and delamanid for drug resistant tb and these medicines these are young patients tb you generally tb affects the most productive population even i contracted it at a young age in my 20s so the costs are very real and people don't seem to be realizing that but we do see that the health advocates uh, in tb are really really active and you are pushing for a lot of things and just recently there has been this open letter which was sent to g20 leaders uh, and it's actually calling for a reversal of this underinvestment that we have been wit- witnessing uh, and for a stronger push to find new vaccines and new treatments Uh, so uh, can you tell me a bit more uh, what is it that uh, health advocates uh, are hoping for uh, what would be like the ideal situation and what do you see happening so the ideal situation we we are seeing is that we want a tb vaccine in the next 9 years time 2030 is what we are say, we have said uh, we need a tb vaccine in place covid has shown us that if we get our act and will together we can do wonders it or it we got an entire vaccine rolled out in a year's time so it's not that we don't have the will we don't have the expertise everything is there in place or no, nor nor is it that we don't know if people say that we don't have the funding even that is there if we 
COVID showed that science can go leaps and bounds and we can actually get a good vaccine in a year's time. We are saying that, hey, it's, we're not asking it for a year. We are saying, give us by 2030, we need a vaccine. Because if not now, then when? Because the TB, uh, the, the WHO report has clearly shown that the devastation in TB is big. It is not, it is, it, it is shocking, like I said, and it is saddening that the deaths have gone up in a decade. And what this means is that advocates have been working for several years. They have seen all the gains getting reversed in just a, in just a year's time. So we, what we are asking for is a now, now that we have seen that action can, you know, if collective action is possible, let's direct it towards TB. And let's see to it that we have a vaccine in place. We are also calling for increased funding uh, because, uh, for example, in, in the global fund against uh, TB, malaria and HIV, uh, in, among all of this, TB has, one of, it has I think, the lowest funding. Uh, uh, or it, even though the number, of, the number of TB deaths and cases is more than, is more than HIV today, so what we are pushing for is that put your money where the mouth is. The, that is the phrase we are looking at, that, that we have done all the talk. We have had people coming to big conferences and talking away and saying, oh, we'll do this, we'll do that. Now, back it up with funding. So we are demanding for a increased funding for TB. And we are, we are saying this not, we are saying this with complete proof from the WHO report that the, 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 that the damage is huge and TB is an airborne infectious disease. It is not, it can spread and no one can be spared. It, it, it could be anyone. There's a very prominent pulmonologist in India uh, who, had, who had made the statement that, that it could, in, in, in a car, it could contract, that if the driver has TB, even the rich person sitting behind will not be spared of it. So it, TB does not discriminate between people because it's in the air. So we are asking for a increased funding. We are asking now, we are getting bolder with our commitments and saying that we need a vaccine now. And what we are saying is that we don't need just one candidate for a vaccine. We need at least five of them. Just don't give us one candidate. We need five candidates. We need even 10 candidates. Even that works. But all of this, I know, requires funding. It's easy. Advocates, TB advocates, we asked, a lot of them are realizing that it's easy to make tall commitments, but unless it is not backed up by money, uh, nothing will move ahead. So we are looking at a two-pronged approach right now where we are pushing for the commitment and we are also asking for the funding. So that is where the G20 letter thankfully emphasizes on that as well. And uh, we and the importance of vaccines we have seen in covid how vaccines have have you know have have managed to bring countries out of lockdowns and shutdowns and uh, it is i keep saying the fact that uh, tb is a disease that that affects in your most productive years i've told this before as well but i'll reiterate it and unless you don't you know, for all leaders who speak about we want we want a bright future for youngsters today, we are seeing in, in all in all COP twenty six uh, everywhere. Everybody are saying that you know we need to we we the future generations will curse us for our cost of inaction. That's exactly what we feel will will happen in TB as well. If you don't take action now and get a vaccine in place and see to it that the numbers go down because we have seen how the numbers have gone up, the cost of lack of diagnosis, the delayed diagnosis, everything we have seen in the WHO report, those numbers are very real. And if I don't think that we can afford to have TB for another generation after this, something has to be done to stop at the tracks now. And I feel vaccine is a way out of that. Thank you so much for joining us. And yes, I hope that in the future we'll be able to cover more also on what, yes. the, what the progress. Yeah, yeah hopefully we will have yeah. some good news on the vaccine front and, and yeah, more, more information. Yeah.